for people to have a connection with a wild animal and then be able to see it improve its condition and then go back out to the world where it belongs, the wild world where it belongs, is very powerful. Um, and it's very hopeful. It's, it gives us something inspiring um, for all of us to witness and to feel a part of. And that's, that's really why we're all here. On the side of the road. Right. The center treats annually about between 15 and 1600 animals a year now, and those animals are coming to us from a pretty large geographic area, about a hundred mile radius. We see animals coming from Maine and southern New Hampshire, and all of these animals are brought to us because people have found them, either being hit by cars or young animals falling out of nests, tangled in fishing line, all kinds of different injuries. So it's really serving many communities by doing the wildlife rehabilitation that we do. We always, after a new animal comes in, we always give them some time in um, the cage just to relax and get a little stress of capture before we examine them and really do anything. Did he fly when you picked him up? Did he no. He was and then oh, the people are always very anxious to get information and to learn what we're going to do with the animal. So then we get some information from them. We want to know where the animal was found, how long ago, if they fed it, what they fed it. If they try, if they noticed anything wrong, sometimes, I mean that's it's very much detective work with us because we can't ask the animal what happened, what went wrong. I'm just gonna have a look in her eyes. When the animals are first admitted to the center, um, it's up to the staff that are here and volunteers to be able to examine them, try to figure out the injury. The animal might need to get on some antibiotics, those wounds are treated. It could be an animal hit by a car, so broken bones may be involved, a turtle crossing the road with a cracked shell. But we can do some basic diagnostics here. We can wrap wings and give fluids and stabilize those animals, and if they need any further medical care, then they go to, go to our veterinarian where he can take x-rays and so forth. Well, the reason most vets don't treat wild animals is because they don't know much about them. You know, they don't have the background, uh, the knowledge, the handling. Uh, they don't know how to handle them properly without getting hurt, um, and they're afraid of them. And it's not taught in vet school. It costs money to do this, you know, it costs, uh, it takes time. There's. Uh, drugs, equipment needed to work on these birds. It was important to me that the center got as much exposure as possible because of the gap between traditional veterinary services and the idea of most people have of fish and wildlife or wildlife services that the state provides. Uh, there's a gap and the gap really has to do with the wildlife that is in your backyard. It's the it's the animals that you come in contact with most. Um, the, the songbirds, the raptor that occasionally comes by, whether that's an owl or some type of a hawk. And these are, animals are important, but they really don't have an advocate. The Center for Wildlife provides care and, and, and services that aren't provided by anybody else. In the summer we probably get about 30 calls a day and maybe a dozen calls a day in the winter so we spend a lot of time on the phone and currently it's mostly staff that answers the phone sometimes volunteers but it takes so much training to be able to handle the phone that it is mostly staff and it's a huge part of the day it's one of the number one jobs we do okay well what I'll have you do for the ride is um, if you don't have a hot water bottle, you can just actually make one. Every day, the phone calls that come in is our first contact with the general public. And we realize that so many people are just, um, they're unaware, they're just not informed on what is natural behavior with an animal, what is safe, what's unusual, what should they do. It's not always just injured wildlife that people are calling about. So the Center for Wildlife has a really um, important role to help educate people on how do we live 
harmoniously with wildlife. You know, they're encroached upon more every single day. And I think if we can have the patience and we can take the time and talk with people and make them realize that the neighborhood they're now living in was once beautiful habitat for those deer, for the raccoons, for the possums that are now trying to figure out how can they adapt. So through education, we can make people more aware, better educated, and hopefully they'll react and respond in a different way, in a more positive way, that could help those animals in the future. I mean, kids already are kind of interested in wildlife, and so for them to build a stronger connection through us um, bringing wild animals in is amazing. You, you can talk at children but um, and teach them or tell them about DDT or pesticides, but if they get to meet Freya, our peregrine falcon, and see the bands on her legs and know that she was one of few um, peregrine falcons in Massachusetts, then they can start to learn and then also feel for the wildlife instead of just knowing about them. One thing we really like to try to do at Center for Wildlife is um, be able to get the people involved as much as possible. I mean, somebody finds an injured animal, it could be the first time they've ever had this kind of experience. So they're emotional, they feel somewhat connected, you know, to this animal that they found. Everybody gets an admission number, we encourage them to call back, be able to check on the animal, we give them the updates, how they're doing. And then when we get near that time to um, release that animal, we try as much as we can to call those people and have them be part of that release. Here we go. Ready? And if it is a happy ending, people just, they just glow. Um, especially if they have kids, but even the adults kind of get like kids when they get to release a, a bird that they helped rescue. I think the Center for Wildlife has come a long way in uh, their uh, staff and training and, and ability to take care of uh, wild animals. Uh, just from the, when I started in the 80s, the looking at what they had, and now they, they're at this very nice facility with a large number of flight cages um, to having a very efficient volunteer staff, which is really, really important to a rehab center. Uh, but if you don't have that support, you can't run a center like this. It's just impossible. The center is an organization that is made up of some really wonderful, talented, dedicated, compassionate people. Um, it's a small group, but we're growing and more people are, are calling, emailing, asking to be involved with us. We're looking for ways to partner with more organizations and individuals to get people involved in what we're doing. It's got to be one of the premier wildlife centers in the eastern United States, I think. It's so satisfying. And I think that's what keeps a lot of us in this line of work. There can be a lot of heartbreak along the way and some really hard days, but when you have an animal that successfully rehabilitates and you put it in that box knowing that today is the big day, you're going back where you were found and you release that, that bird or that porcupine, whatever it might be from your hands, if you think, you know, it has a second chance out there. Yeah.